What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. As the title suggests, this is gonna be top five tips for beginners getting into DaVinci Resolve. One of the things I've noticed with a lot of the comments on some of the other videos I've done is just, you know, how hard it can be to start a new piece of software. Whether you are a seasoned professional as a video editor or whether you're just new to it completely, jumping into a new bit of software is a little bit daunting. So that's what this video is for. Five quick tips to get you started. And then once you watch this video, I do recommend you watch my full guide. It's a lot longer, a lot more in depth. But if you're one of those people to, you know, you don't really wanna watch that, watch this. You'll get some quick tips that you're gonna find really useful and you can delve into it yourself. But again, I'd recommend watching this one. And then again, link up above to my more in-depth beginner tutorial. So jumping into DaVinci Resolve, here we go. We've imported some media into DaVinci Resolve. The first thing that I wanna talk about is timeline settings because you know you wanna know how to adjust your timeline settings so that if you're shooting 1080p, 4K, or if maybe you've got something even better than that. And it's really, really simple. Once you're in, all you need to do is hit this cog down the bottom. This is gonna be your project settings. And the first window it opens up to is the master settings. And here you can change your timeline resolution to whatever you want, 4K, or if you have the studio version, you can go right up to 8K. You can also adjust your frame rates and all that sort of stuff. And that's the quick way to do it there. All right, tip number two is favoriting folders. So when importing media, you go to the media tab down the bottom, this is where we'll do all our importing. And normally, you know, this top section here is going to be your folder structure on your computer. It doesn't matter whether it's Mac or Windows, this will be your file structure. And then you have your favorites here. The favorites is where things get really handy because the way I normally edit is I will create a folder here on my desktop and this is basically where I'll put the footage into the folder while I'm working on it. That's where it lives. So normally I would have to go Macintosh HD, users, down to desktop, and footage luckily it's open for me there, but if it wasn't, that's a bit of a pain. I know that I operate out of the desktop all the time. So it's a really simple thing to add it to the favorites because when you add it to the favorites, you can just click on it and it will take you to the desktop. So in the file structure, you're gonna to wanna to navigate to where you wanna go. So we're gonna go users to desktop, go down to it, right click, and simply just go add folder to favorites. And it's already there. And I recommend you do this for everything you access quite frequently. I have a couple of folders on my hard drive here that store background music and sound effects. Generally, I download on a per video basis, but you know, when you're away from internet, it's nice to have a little library there and all the music that I get is from Epidemic Sound. So what I've done is I've favorited these folders down here. So now I can click on background music and in a cinch, I can access some music there and drag it straight into the timeline. Same with sound effects. I've got some there that I can just chuck in. And I've also got a video presets folder about it. This just has my intro scene and my end screen that I've stopped really using. But you know, you get the idea. Things that you use all the time. It's really great just to have the favorite folders. Kind of gets rid of the need to use this structure here. And you can just click and access all those folders that you need to. And again, you can just right click on folders to add to favorites, super simple. All right, tip number three is adjusting the timeline size or dimensions. And what I mean by that is if I drag a little bit of footage onto the timeline, now yours is gonna look a little bit different because I've tweaked this project a little bit, but the idea behind this is changing the size. So first off, if you wanna change the size of a track, you can go down here and when you get this grab, you can make them larger or smaller. To get to the actual settings though, you click this button here, timeline view options. What this is gonna do is give you a lot of different things. So you can have stacked timelines, which will give you tabs. So you can create another timeline, just have it right next to it. You can have subtitles enabled, I don't really use that. You can turn on or off the audio waveforms, but not only that, you can decide how you want it viewed, whether you want it single layer like that or you want it doubled, this is always the best way to go. And you can have it highlighted so it's easier to see. You can have it in the center. There's a lot of different ways and you can also make adjust your sizing there. So you can make your video track a little bit larger and you have some default sizes as well. So you can have film. So this is where you can actually see your video, uh, but I don't use it so it doesn't really matter. And you've got the opposite which is thumbnail so you don't actually see the whole strip whereas here you do and then like I said the one that I like to use and then I just drag the audio out 
and have the audio waves like that. And this is how I edit. But that, you know, if you're not happy with the way it looks, maybe you've come from Final Cut Pro, which looks a little bit different, or you've come from Premiere Pro, that is how you adjust it. Just that little button there, fiddle with the options, find something you like. On to the next one. All right, so tip number four is how to declutter the workspace. And that's because there are a lot of windows inside DaVinci Resolve and things can get out of hand super, super quickly. And all of a sudden you've got this tiny little timeline and all this sort of stuff and it can get even worse. It's just like, how do you declutter it? Well, by these buttons that I've been pressing. What you're gonna find on the top corners of the screen on pretty much every screen that you're on, whether that's the edit page, or the media page, you have these arrows. And what they do is extend these side panes down, which are activated by the headings up here. So metadata, audio. What I recommend is if you're on a laptop, it's better to have it so that they only take up a small quadrant. Because you can see if I have that take that, then all of a sudden your media pool is quite small, which is more prevalent if you're on the edit page. You want a nice large timeline to be able to edit easier. So to declutter the workspace, you just have them sitting like that. And again, if at any point you accidentally hit it and you're like, oh no, how do I undo it? You know, just go back up here click that and it just makes things a little bit less cluttered in the workspace because I think by default it is a bit it is like that so uh, you know it's not a big tip but for those of you starting out if you start getting freaked out because it gets a little bit too cluttered that is an easy way to declutter it like so and tip number five is how to sync audio I feel like this is something that a lot of people come across. So it's really, really easy to do inside of DaVinci Resolve. You select your audio, then you command or control, click the corresponding video, right click on it, and you just go auto sync audio. Now, if you're using time code, you can use time code. Generally, the majority of us on YouTube probably using waveform. Generally, what I'll do is go based on waveform rather than a pen track. If you go based on waveform and a pen track, what it'll give you is two audio tracks the one that was recorded with the camera and the one that you recorded separately. So generally I just go based on waveform, that'll grab your good audio, chuck it in with the video and all you need to do is drag that video clip down onto the timeline and you're good to go. It's as simple as that and I've never had a single issue with it. Just make sure that if you're gonna do audio separately that you do a bit of a, gives the waveform a nice spike to be able to line up the waveforms in post. There you go guys, just five quick tips on how to make getting into DaVinci Resolve just a little bit easier. Yes, there could be a lot more to this list. That's why I have a more in-depth video. You can see that link below, as well as some literature that I've actually picked up that I use to learn DaVinci Resolve. So I'll leave those linked below because books are your friends and it helps, honestly, it does. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you kind of like what we're doing here, consider subscribing because I will be doing more videos and I'm thinking maybe doing some really quick videos, just really short and snappy how to do particular tasks because you know, who wants to sit through a eight minute long video to find one little tidbit. Anyway, until the next video guys, see ya.